Good afternoon, everyone. It is Friday, September 13, 2024. I am Stephen Perwire, and our Perwire Financial Plan with Direction. After the weekly wrap up, we're going to talk about Medicare annual enrollment period is next month. What do I do? Next month begins the annual enrollment period for Medicare. It's for anyone that's on Medicare. If you're not on Medicare, this does not apply. It runs every year from October 15th to Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th. During this time, you can make as many changes as you'd like for the following year during this period. Last application received on or before December 7th will be the one that counts. Any applications received on or after December 8th will not be helpful. As a licensed agent, I cannot start talking about the specifics of any of next year's plans before October 1st. Licensed agents like myself may not accept applications before October 15th. And by the way, this doesn't apply if you've got another enrollment in, uh, period. Uh, I can accept the application for them as appropriate when they occur. So people ask, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Well, ask yourself, am I happy with the plan I'm in right now? And what I like to say, and if that's the case, just do nothing. You'll be rolled into next year's version of the plan. There will be differences, and you should receive an annual notice of change, also known as an ANOC letter, early in the fall. Oh, no, it's past December 7th, and I want to change plan. What next? Well, for January, it's likely you'll be in the plan you either signed up for during annual enrollment period or elected to remain in during the annual enrollment period. January 1 begins the open enrollment period. It runs from January 1st to March 31st, first three months of the year. During this period, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you can make a change. But if you're on original Medicare with or without a Medicare supplement, this option is not available to you. Once you exercise this option, you know, say you figure out in January you need to change plans in February or March, once you pull that trigger and change to another plan, that ends the open enrollment period for you. And once April 1st arrives, the option of making a change without some sort of special enrollment period is gone. You're pretty much locked in for the rest of the year. Okay. Something you should know, if you get a phone call from somebody talking to you about Medicare Advantage, okay, unless there's some sort of established relationship, like this is the guy you, uh, you get your car insurance from, or this is the lady you got your life insurance from, or another guy who you have investments with, that's an that's a established relationship. They can call you about it. Otherwise, licensed agents are not permitted to cold call or knock on your door to solicit you. If you call a licensed agent where you don't have some sort of established relationship, uh, you can call anytime you like it. If you leave a message and say, hey, please call me back at this number, then the agent can call you back. Of course, they'll need to follow up and get written permission. Uh, you either use a permission to contact form or business reply card. These forms are set, you know, it's where you grant permission to uh, for the agent to call you, and uh, you can say stop calling me anytime you like and a half an hour. But uh, if you receive a call from somebody that doesn't fall into one of those categories, the established relationship, or you know, you gave them permission to contact, uh, you're, those those folks are in violation. So I know we've seen a lot of these commercials with famous celebrities from the 70s at least. Uh, one's a football player, another is on a on a comedy in the 70s. Uh, if you call them, you're probably going to uh, do something that gives them permission to call you. So if you call to have your benefits checked, it's likely you're going to start receiving these calls. In that case, they're probably not in violation. By the way, you can get the same information from any licensed agent. Now, it's my opinion you should always use a licensed agent. Number one, licensed agents like myself are required to go through extensive training, which includes an exam that has a passing grade of 85 or 90 percent. And then after that, I have to go take tests with all the companies uh, I represent. 
it's why, in my opinion, licensed agents on the Medicare side are among the best trained in the industry. And I personally favor independent agents, not only because I am one, but because every company is not a good fit for every individual. So the fact that I offer more than one company gives me a better opportunity to find something that's a good fit. And probably the most important reason to use a licensed agent, there is no cost for the consultation. Again, a final thought, I'll emphasize this. I suggest using a licensed agent. There's no cost for the consultation. And I suggest using an independent agent. Now, even though it's not required, it's handy for you to have a list of your prescriptions ready in case you want the agent to confirm the plan they're showing you covers all of your meds because every plan is a formula and they don't cover every medication. So I like to make sure that when I'm introducing a client to our prospect to a plan, I want to want to make sure all their drugs are covered. And also, even though it's not required, it may be useful to have a list of the doctors you want to keep because not all plans are accepted by all doctors. And just calling up and saying, hey, do you accept XYZ insurance? They may not know. Uh, have somebody like me figure it out for you. That way you can hold us responsible. Once you graduate, be it from welding school, engineering school, or law school, you're going to need a different plan for each of these stages that's tailored to your individual situation. During your working years, most important question is, am I saving enough and is it in the right place? The line path to retirement, which I define as the last 10 years prior to retirement, will the USS retirement be ship shape on the appointed day? When you're in retirement, one of the primary questions is how do I avoid running money, running out of money before I run out of life? Medicare is an important part of that because healthcare can get expensive if you're not partnered up with a right insurance company. And legacy, what does what I worked hard for get to where I want it to after I'm done with retirement? You can reach me at my website, herwarefinancial.com. I do in-person, Zoom, and phone appointments. And I am licensed and registered across several states and can easily add states if there's a need. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can click on the schedule an appointment button. It's in the upper right-hand corner of my website. If you want to see more videos like this, go to my website, click on the YouTube channel button. It's that red one between the N and the F buttons next to my schedule an appointment button. If your friends want more information, they can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for those who prefer the good old-fashioned telephone, I can be reached at 518-631-2569. do not text that number. You'll be sad, I'll be sad, because the text will not reach me. You can see on the screen there is a separate texting number. Paintings, voices, material, are for general information only. Not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance reference is historical. No guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested in directly. All data is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no representation is made as to its completeness or accuracy. None of this is to be construed as tax or legal advice. Consult your advisor prior to taking any action. Unmanaged index returns do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment. Investing in stock includes numerous specific risks, including fluctuation of dividend, loss of principal, potential illiquidity of, in, of the investment in a falling market. Investing in mutual funds involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Fund value will fluctuate with market conditions and it may not achieve its investment objective. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is comprised of 30 stocks that are major factors in their industries and widely held by individuals and institutional investors. The Standard & Poor's 500 Index is a cap-weighted index of 500 stocks designed to measure performance of the broad domestic economy through changes in the aggregate market value of 500 stocks representing all major industries. The NASDAQ Composite Index measures all NASDAQ domestic and non-US-based common stocks listed on the NASDAQ stock market. The market value Last sale of price multiplied by the total shares outstanding is calculated throughout the trading day and is related to the total value of the index. 
Per Wire Financial and LPL Financial are not endorsed or affiliated with the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services or any government agency. Uh, everybody have a great couple of weeks because I will not be here for the next two weeks. Uh, have a great fall. See you soon.